Hey guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. My nickname is iFacepalm and in this episode we're going to take a closer look at the Soviet Tier 9 reward tank, the Object 777 version 2. During this tank review we'll be looking into whether if it's worth grinding for, how its tank statistics looks, we will compare it against several of its competitors. Furthermore, we will perform an armor profile rundown with focus on its weak spots and strength. And afterwards, I will take you guys alongside a battle I just had yesterday, which hopefully will give you an idea of this tank in action. And finally, I will finish up with a quick sum up and my rating of this soviet tank okay guys so is this soviet tier 9 reward tank anything worth especially as you as a player have so many awesome tier 9 tanks to choose from and in my honest opinion the tier 9 is the most balanced tier at this current stage with loads of very enjoyable tanks and with very few really bad tanks the thing is that the object 777 version 2 is the latest reward tank to be added in the expedition 2020 selection list and as it is a russian tank my expectations were indeed through the roof and the super low tank profile of this heavy tank made me believe at least on first glance that this was a heavy tank that could be used in the medium tank role. I simply love the low profile on my LT432 or the T100 LT light tank and this tank suddenly gave me the impression that it could take a different role on the battlefield rather than its heavy tank classification. But the problem quickly arrived that the statistics of it just seemed kinda underwhelming to say it mildly. But I'm sure that it's just me. There's no way that wargaming is going to introduce an underpowered Soviet tank right? It must be overpowered in some some way. Let's take a look guys and do a quick stats rundown with my current crew and tank setup. So as this is a premium slash reward tank I can use my heavy tank crew from the IS-3 too which is primarily focused on brothers in arms, gun handling, camouflage and view rate. For the equipment I have selected a turbocharger, yes, vertical stabilizer and binoculars. And you might be wondering what is happening. <laughs> of course we will go into more detail in just a sec. For the ammunition I have selected 22 AP shells, 15 heat shells and 3 explosives. The AP shells are capable of dealing 400 140 alpha damage, 258 penetration and a shell velocity of 940. So nothing really unique or super special, especially for a tier 9. For the heat shells, unfortunately it delivers a lower shell velocity of 20, but offers a fantastic penetration of 340. But I must say that I would any day prefer a high velocity APCR shell rather than a heat shell. And last, three high explosive shells. And the price for the AP shell itself this will cost you 1065 and the heat shell will cost you 5200. Yeah. For the consumables, large repair kit, small first aid kit and I use extra combat ration. So you might be wondering what is this blue icon? The thing is that this particular event reward tank receives a free standard large repair kit which is simply awesome as it will save you 20,000 credits. Do notice though that you cannot demount it. So so far so good but how are the statistics? So we had 440 alpha damage, 258 average penetration, rate of fire of 4.81 which makes us deliver a shell every 12.48 seconds, gun traverse speed of 28.96, gun depression of minus 6 and it's pretty average aiming time of 2.6 that looks quite good but how are the hidden statistics and a gun dispersion of 0.38 which is not very uncommon in the heavy tank territory furthermore average damage per minute of 2116 which is major crew at best hit point pool of 1850 yeah hull armor of 132 and a turret armor of 258 so the gun statistics doesn't look very impressive so it must be all about its armor right well we're of course going to take a deeper look at the armor profile but at this current stage nothing special the engine power of 806 to Together with the turbocharger is capable of providing us a horsepower per ton of 16.07. And you might be wondering why am I fitting a turbocharger on a heavy tank, especially the Object 772. Russian heavies are usually fast. The thing is that this tank to be honest is very very sluggish. The ground resistances which we will see in the comparison is nothing special. So even as this tank want to portray to you a nimble or fast heavy tank it just seems extremely sluggish. And at least in my opinion the turbocharger is a definite must. <laughs> because without the turbocharger it just feels so extremely underwhelming in regard of its speed at least for the role that I want to use it in where I can reposition and take those snapshots when needed the whole traverse speed of 3394 is neither special and the same with the camo values and then you might be thinking 528 meters of view range that's good yeah it's a fantastic view range but wait until you see the comparison versus the other tier 9 vehicles and last it features a fantastic signal range of 905 but is that really the only number that is fantastic here together with the armor profile is that it <laughs> Let's take a look at the comparison. Okay guys, so here we have the comparison, the Object 7772. And here we compare it against the, the American AE Phase 1 reward tank, the T10, the Object 257, the W Z1111-4, the E75 and the 50TP. For the DPM, the Object 777 takes the last spot with its nearly 1900. The penetration value of 258 is pretty standard, nothing out of the ordinary. The alpha damage of 440 looks definitely good. The problem is that 440 alpha damage for tier 9 is 
is pretty standard. Where we can see the T10 and the Object 257 Russian tanks delivers the exact same. Where the other Chinese or German or Polish competitors have a gun that is able to deal either 490, 530 or 560 alpha damage. It's a gigantic difference. For the rate of fire, 4.32, which makes it fire a shell every 13.9 seconds, which is definitely nothing out of the ordinary in this comparison. And the 940 meters shell velocity for its standard shells places it around the middle. Do notice that the Object 257 have a shell velocity of 1259. And when switching to premium ammunition, the shell velocity does not get any better, with suddenly the E75 and the 50TP share the first and second place. Keep in mind that both the AA Phase 1, the T10, the Object 257 and the WZ all uses heat shells as premium ammunition, in comparison to the E75 and the 50TP that both are using APCR. Okay, so how does the gun handling look then? 2.9 seconds aiming time. Yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. Where both the E75 and the AA Phase 1 are miles ahead are the gun dispersion, 0.42. And here we again worst of the class. What about the gun handling when moving, when tank traversing, when turret traversing? 0.2, nothing out of the ordinary. We are slightly better than E75 and the 50TP. What about the tank traverse, 0.2. Again, its closest Russian competitors are better. What about the turret traverse, 0.12. Again, it's nothing special. It seems like this tank is mediocre at best at this current state. What am I missing? It must be the mobility, right? So here we have a forward speed of 40 an hour. Heavy tank? Yeah, but check this. The T10 Russian, 50. The Object 257 Russian, 50. Chinese, WZ, 50. Yeah, and again we are placed in the middle at best. And the reverse speed of 50 an hour is definitely nothing out of the ordinary. For the power to weight ratio, 15.06, which looks quite good. And this is the figure I was hoping for. But the problem is, by looking at the terrain resistances, it's, uh, it again gets punished here with values of 1.2, 1.4 and 2.6 on soft terrain. For the armor and health, 132 for the whole armor, turret armor of 258. But as we know, as these figures are quite tricky, we're going to take a deeper look at this in the armor profile analyze in just a second. The health of the tank of 1850 is again nothing out of the ordinary, which places it again around the middle. Yeah. And for the last figures, for the view range, 380. Yes, that looks quite good for a heavy tank, but not when you suddenly compare what the other competing tier 9 tanks has. 390, 400, 390, 400, 400, 380. This is also one of the reasons why I have picked binoculars to even have a chance to outspot some of the enemy tanks. And for the camera values, the figures look rather awesome in comparison to the other tier 9 tanks. But keep in mind guys, these are tier 9 heavy tanks. These figures are not impressive in any way and does definitely not make up for all of the downsides it has. <laughs> but check this guys, range of 850. This is just, it seems like wargaming whenever they make an overpowered tank <laughs> nerfing the radio range but for this tank as of current that seems completely underwhelming in every way they're going to buff it with a fantastic radio range of 850 yeah okay guys let's take a look at the armor profile okay so how does the armor profile look of the object 777 version 2 let's take a look at the live version and here we're using the 258 millimeter ap penetrating rounds and now it starts to look rather interesting well at least some places <laughs> not here that offers around 200 millimeter okay guys so check these values here and even the place that does not have an insane effective armor you're receiving a fantastic angle that still be able to bounce shells effectively some of these figures are just insane 1539 yeah and at the lower part here you see figures of around 300 and when moving closer to the gun mantle we have figures of around 250 which with around 50 percent chance to penetrate and just below the gun you're getting featuring some fantastic figures with, that ranges between 300 to 400 with a few exceptions and just below again around 300 millimeter. So what about if you switch to the 340 millimeter of penetrating heat shells? It looks definitely better. But yeah, do notice the two cupolas in the upper plate and of course near the gun mantle. With a shell that is capable of dealing 340 penetration, it should not be a bigger problem to penetrate this tank. And if you use this tank on the ridge line, you will still be able to achieve a very impressive armor values of 260 on its weak sides and the weak spots. Let's switch back to the 258 millimeter AP shells. And as you notice, the turret itself is quite well angled. So even when shot from the side, you might be able to bounce a shell or two. You can clearly see here with, with the values of 300 millimeter, 210 millimeter. For the upper hull, we have an armor of 115 millimeter thick, and just below, we have an effective armor thickness of 155 millimeter due to the spaced armor. Do notice the armor profile here, where you'll be able to receive some insane figures. This is due to, as you can see here, the armor profile is quite well angled here, which is actually hidden because on the live view, you simply cannot see this. But when looking, we can clearly see that it has an additional angle here. Which for the rear of the tank, we have values that are ranging between 150 millimeter to 140 millimeter. And for the rear part, we have values that range from around 55 millimeter to around 70 millimeter. And furthermore, this tank can be used quite effective to side scrape with. But keep in mind that a skill 
Blue player will be able to effectively penetrate you by hitting you right here through the track. So when looking at this, you might be thinking, this tank has some of the best armor in game. Well, you're definitely going to bounce shells. The problem is, this is a tier 9 vehicle and it is not very uncommon that you're going to encounter tier 10 vehicles or tier 9 that are firing premium ammunition. And another ironic problem is that, that many of the places where you would go hold down, <laughs> you simply cannot. This armor profile is so low. I have experienced several times where I'm using a specific rock or tank rack to hide behind, but it's actually covering my whole tank so I can't even shoot behind it. And the 6 degrees gun depression makes it challenging to play at the ridge line. If this tank just had those two or maybe even three degrees more of gun depression it would completely change this tank in my opinion because you would be able to effectively use it on a ridge line but because of its sheer length and the low profile which ironically becomes more of an annoyance rather than a benefit this really surprised me when playing this russian premium so yeah as long as you can cover your lower plate you can definitely bounce a shot or two the challenge will be hiding your lower plate <laughs> all in all guys i'm not impressed by this armor profile because ironically each and every single enemy is going to shoot you on the lower plate and even if you try to angle it it is not really a big problem for another tier 9 vehicle to penetrate you rather effectively okay guys let's take a look at the gameplay i just had yesterday okay guys so here we are in live oaks in the object 777 version 2 we have a fantastic matchmaker but we are tier 9 tank against tier 7s yeah this could be interesting indeed so for this particular battle, I'm choosing to go uh, down the 9 line. Let's see. I want to see if I can do, play this game rather aggressive. So the right of the bat, I want to see if I can get down the dip here. Hopefully we will not encounter too many enemy tanks. Yes, I could of course go the heavy line, but it just takes so long time for the heavy tanks to fight out that battle. So I'm hoping that we can do aggressive push from this side as long as I have some support. You can see that my teammates unfortunately don't seem to follow with me. But as I am a tier 9 tank in this battle, I can risk this. Usually if, if I was the same tier, I would most likely be rushed and I would be killed off. But here we at least have a nice chance. Can I get a shot into... Ah, the counter pressure is simply not working for this tank. At least not on this ridge line. And there's plenty of enemies, I don't want to peek out too much. So we can find here. The thing is, even if I could rush this current stage, my teammate seems <laughs> slightly afraid at this stage. And it doesn't help that the enemy numbers are just in seeming to increase here. Yeah? Okay, getting some spotting damage on the Tiger P. Let's see if we can keep him lit. The enemy team is us slightly worried. Watch. Uh, slightly worried about pushing me. That EBR can be quite annoying. The artillery is also putting focus on us. Okay, so at least got the Tiger P was. Killed by our teammates, it's good. Let's see if we can catch the VR off guard. Yeah, 494 alpha. A lot of damage, <laughs> that's nice. Okay, now it looks like they're going to push the lens and see. Yeah. I'll shoot into him. Come on, come on, move. See so if we can angle the armor so if it will work. <laughs> Even with the side it bounced, yeah. Nice and on fire. Beautiful. 
Okay, so we're getting pushed by the next one, AMXM4. How does one of this go? Let's see if we can angle the armor slightly. Yeah. Of course, you don't force my hit. So if not the best, can we? There you go. It's the thing with this tank because you can bounce. You can really have some RNG with this tank because you can bounce shields quite often with, with the side and the strange angles. Especially when they're top tier. Shield into that and we bounce the shield off again. It's only the 9 2. Let's see if we can put in pressure on that guy. And we receive another shot. Yeah, do notice that the Leopard and the AMX were all firing APC R shields on us. And that's the thing. You know, the, the armor profile might might seem fantastic, but when the enemy team is always going that was <laughs> really bad shot. Uh, but when the enemy team, you know, just switches to APC R um, yeah, then the whole effectiveness of your armor really diminishes. It's like, in, well, it's like when you play with the with the mouse. You know, the armor on paper looks simply stunning and amazing, but you also know that nine out of ten players will simply switch to gold ammunition. Ah, just died just before putting a shell. Oh, a panther from the side. <laughs> Good luck penetrating me. Well, let's see. Maybe he can. Maybe he can. Maybe not. <laughs> Everyone seems just to die before I can clean them up also. Come on. Can, can we get in? Mm, shot on the Crusader. Nope. And what about the TS5? Come on. Well, there's only so many tanks ahead. But we're not giving up. Can we put in a last shell on the TS5? <laughs> Everyone rushing towards them. He's not giving up, that's for sure. Just want to, want to shoot him directly front on. Ah, beautiful. Yeah, 443. Yeah! 3,279 damage and 1,511 spotting. Not bad. But we were top tier, of course. So the Object 777 version 2. Is it worth the grind? The thing is that I really want to like this tank, but no matter how much I seem to try to like it, it just don't want to let me. The only reason I can think of why this tank is so underwhelming is simply because it is not a premium tank that you can buy from the premium shop. The tank comparison did clearly show where this tank stands. The problem is that there's nothing that stands out besides its low profile, the sheer length of the tank and its fantastic signal range. Yeah, so how many face bombs would I give this tank i will give it the thing is that this tank is not horrible it just feels like this tank wants to be everything a jack of all trades but because of that ends up being nothing special all of the other fantastic tier 9 competitors that are just miles ahead in my honest opinion the object 7772 feels more like it should be a t8 tank rather than tier 9 so yes the armor profile is definitely in the tier 9 league but then again it does not make up for all of his downside and then again you cannot trust your lower hull so personally at least for me I do not see any reason to play the Object 7772. I would rather play the Object 257, the T10, the E75, the IS-3 too. Uh, okay guys, let's finish up. And of course, I hope that this tank review was helpful towards your decision on whether you should select the Object 777 version 2 as your next reward tank. And as always, thanks a lot for watching guys. This was my tank review number 18. I hope you enjoyed it. And let me know what you think of the Object 777 version 2 in the comments below. And as always, if you like to see more crazy content from my side, feel free to leave a like or even subscribe it's a big thumbs up for me and i appreciate it a lot cheers guys take care and see you next time